Hey map fans, welcome back. We're ready to start modeling, finally. But first of all, we need to open our model up. So if I highlight this, I'm gonna right click it. And what are we gonna do? We are going to edit our model. There it is. Currently our model has nothing in it. Now if you've just joined this video series, uh, do look back at the previous videos. They'll get you up to speed. But if you want to know how to make a model, this is a quick video to show you exactly how to do that. Now the aim of this model that we're going to build is called Buffer and Intersect and we are going to start with buffering. So what do we need? We need some data. I'm going to use my point layer, the owl nests, and I'm going to bring it into the model. So we can just drag it across and there it is. Owl nests is in. Fantastic. Next we would like to do some buffering of our owl nests. So if we go to analysis tools, buffer shows us proximity and we can grab the buffer tool and drag that one in. And you can see that the buffer tool is automatically connected to an output feature class. This is looking very good. The buffer tool currently looks a little bit pasty, it has no colour to it, so that's because it doesn't have an input. And if we right click on the buffer tool, open it up, and now we can start setting what we would like to do. So I'm going to change some of these settings. For our input features, I'll use our owl nests, marvellous, and for our output feature, you can see because we've previously set our scratch and current workspaces that it's defaulted to our projectdata.gdb. Great stuff. And what we're going to do, instead of using a linear unit, if you remember in our Alnest uh, attribute table, we had a buffer distance column. So we're actually going to use that field to dictate what the buffer distances are going to be. So if you're using your own data, do make sure that you include a buffer distance column. And the next thing we're going to do is dissolve type none, method planar. Reading about these methods, this can be quite interesting, so do have a look at those if you'd like to. Dissolve type's fine as none. Dissolve type will make things dissolve, basically, so between your buffers, you can have them all joined together or you can have them as individuals. Um, play around with that, see what it does. So if I OK that, now we've got some colour. Excellent. And that's how we make a model. This is one of the simplest models you can make. We have an input, we have a geoprocessing tool, we have an output. Now wouldn't it be fun to run it? Let's try that and see what happens. It's completed. Let's close it. You can see that we get these shadows. The shadows on the tool and the output mean that they've been done. Has it been added to our display? It has not. So if we go to add data and we look in our project GDB, then we should be able to see Alnest UTM buffer and we will add that. Okay, let's get rid of our model for a minute. Right click, zoom to layer, and look at that. We have our buffers in, and that was our model that produced them. So we have different size buffers according to what state the nest is in. Uh, here we've got failed inactive and our active ones have the largest buffers. Now I'm just going to remove this. I'm going to open up our model again down at the right and I'm going to validate the model. That will get rid of our shadows and I'm just going to right click on Alnest UTM and ensure that it gets added to the display. So right click, add to display and let's try that one again. See if it goes in automatically. So let's hit run yeah, there it is. Over here, that has gone in automatically. 
or auto magically as people like to say these days. All right, so next time we will have a look at how we can add the intersect tool. Thanks a lot for watching. Give us the thumbs up and subscribe, please. Happy mapping.